You know what I love seeing in gaming news, just in general? I love seeing things like this. Or how about this? Or one of my personal favorites, this. Yes, this right here. Seeing one of my favorite studios from the last 15 years just basically up and disappear. Now I know what you're saying, but Talon, they're still around. Rockstar is still around. They're not gone. They are. They are gone. And you know what? I can make a full video talking about studios back in the good old days and what it means in today's world. But you know what? Let's face the facts. The Rocksteady of old, the ones who made the pinnacle Batman games, not perfect games, but they are amazing games. They're gone. They are absolutely gone. And there's no denying that. And that is why we now have this game, The Suicide Squad. Now, if you've been living under a rock, you probably know that anything related to The Suicide Squad has been ripped to shreds, whether it's YouTube comments, whether it's dislikes, which yes, you can find the dislike button still, through add-ons on Chrome and everything like that, Reddit posts, you name it. Everyone, for the most part, can't say everyone, but mostly everyone is like, why? Why this game? What is going on, Rocksteady? When, if you do a little research, it's actually not that surprising that this is where they are currently at right now because the Rocksteady that we knew, the ones who made Batman, they're gone. They are all gone. New leaders have come in now, brought in by Warner Brothers, who are focusing on live service. And again, that little article that we showed you at the beginning, you know exactly why, because Warner Brothers is pulling a Sony right now. And they think, you know what? It's still 2017, when in reality, it's 2023, and we are getting freaking tired of all of the live service games. But it hasn't stopped them. Through multiple delays, Suicide Squad should have been released almost two years ago. But guess what? It's almost 2024, and that's when it's finally going to release. Because again, Warner Bros. wants you to do this. But I'm getting ahead of myself. They decided to release a little uh, info video, essentially, like that. Trying to spin the narrative, essentially, to not focus on the battle passes which everyone hates or the tons of different weapons and everything no they want to focus on rocksteady strengths and everything like that you know the things that we know them for does it work eh, if the comments in the video dislikes or anything to go by not so much so what i thought i'd do here i don't usually do these types of videos and i don't want to just go through the entire video sit here and just kind of give you all face reactions or anything like that there are parts of this video that i want to play i want you to watch with me I'm going to pause it after that. And then I want to talk about what this really means. Looking at something from a marketing standpoint, what it means as a gamer who has loved Rocksteady in the past and just what Warner Brothers focus is right now. Because if you believe this little article here about Wonder Woman game, you're just like, but wait, you said this in an earnings call not just long ago. Yeah, uh, you're kind of contradicting yourself there. So. We're gonna take a look at this video. We're gonna see if this little thing is makes it any better. I wanna know all your thoughts down in the comments. Do you think this game is good? Do you think this game is going to be good? Are you gonna be picking it up? Do you think it's just gonna be worth it? Or are you gonna do what I'm gonna do, which is most likely just wait for the entire movie cutscenes to be put on YouTube after someone's played it and just watch that? Cause I won't lie, parts of the story actually, you, you see a little bit of greatness in there. You really do. Everything else, not so much. With that being said, I'm Talon with Direct Gaming, and we are going to react to the new Suicide Squad trailer, and uh, we're just going to see how it goes. If you enjoy this type of content, though, or you like this kind of format, we're going back and forth between things, let us know in the comments below, and maybe leave a like on the video, and if you really want to, a sub is always appreciated. Helps us out a ton. Without further ado, though, let's get into this trailer real quick. Where are we going? And who are we killing? I'm Darius Sadegian, studio director at Rocksteady Studios. My name is Axel Ridby, and I'm the game director here. Eyes up, people! Let's go. At Rocksteady, storytelling and character depth are the core DNA of our game. These are not features, but Rocksteady fundamentals. With Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League, I mean, we wanted to tell a new story. We wanted to expand the Arkham verse. Coming from Batman, Okay, I got I got to stop him already. I got I I knew this was what it was. A well, quick little update right here. The reason this is coming out a few days after this initially dropped is because when this dropped, I was over at the city hall here in Tokyo where I live and uh I actually got married. So I had to go through all that stuff. And then 
I saw all of the extra articles about this Wonder Woman game and everything like that, and I wanted to kind of piece my thoughts together. And I, I've watched part of this, but I haven't seen all of it. But I heard and just saw like random clips online and social media and all that stuff because, again, in this line of work, it's very hard to stay off of spoilers unless I like literally turn everything off. But the moment I started, I saw people saying like, oh yeah, they're trying to tell us that it's all about the story now and everything like that. And I'm sitting here going, oh, this is what they meant. Literally less than 30 seconds into this little trailer thing here. And yeah, I can tell they do not want the topic of the battle pass, the guns, the live stir stuff or anything like that. They are, they're more, they're, I give their marketing people credit and whoever they brought in, which I believe is actually someone from the division two. I have to confirm that, but they have 100% brought somebody in to replace the, obviously the founders who have left Rockstar, you know, the people who founded the Rockstar studios in the, in the first place, they brought somebody in who not only knows live service games, but how to market it. Because I guarantee you somebody who doesn't pay attention to gaming news all the time or anything like that, which You'd actually be shocked. It's quite a few people. They are, they're going to think, oh yeah, story, Batman, Arkham, all that. They're going to love this. Do not be fooled. Do not be fooled by this. This is 100% all marketing to try and get you to think that they are focusing 100% on the campaign, the story, the whole nine yards. When in reality, this is a live service game through and through, especially if you go to their website, which we'll go check out after we're done looking at this trailer and everything. But, oh man, it is just, I props props Warner Brothers. I definitely give you props for at least, you know, doing this cuz you're you're going to get some people who enjoy this. So, anyway, let's continue on. Man, where it was just from his perspective, just from his lens. Now getting to see the world through the villain's eyes was really the hook for us. Suicide Squad Killed the Justice League is a third-person action shooter that can be played solo or with your friends. It's a story-driven game that highlights Rocksteady's experience in bringing characters to life. As a Suicide Squad, you'll be forced to take on an. Sorry, I, I, I don't, I don't want to get the habit of doing this. Trust me, we're going to skip some of the boring parts and everything. But I just have to say that the the whole like we're going to focus on what Rocksteady is known for and everything. That Rocksteady's gone. They are gone. And look, I'm really not trying to be negative here or anything like that. Like when this initially was announced, and it's like Rocksteady, like dude, their next game and everything. It's just been over eight years since we've gotten a Rocksteady game. I was super hyped and ecstatic for this kind of game for a game anything from them that that old rock steady is gone this new team while i'm not trying to bash the developers they're just making the game that they're being told to we all know that rock steady was working on something else it was reported on quite a few times that they're working on some sort of potential superman game or something like that and warner brothers said no uh they basically shot the idea down it kind of makes sense if that's all true that since this game takes place in Metropolis, who's from Metropolis? Superman. It kind of goes hand in hand that they were probably working on some kind of concept for that type of game. And yeah, it's just we where we are right now. So anyway, sorry, gonna shut up. Keep watching. Absolute impossible mission. You must kill the Justice League. We want the mechanics of the game to really reflect the personalities of the squad. I'm always first on the trigger. We want their moves to be flamboyant, exaggerated, chaotic. Let's make like cheap chewing gum and not stick around. Now, our four members of Task Force X find themselves inside Metropolis. At twice the size of Gotham City in Arkham Knight. It's big, it's loud, it's a battlefield. It's a place built for verticality, mobility, the unique fusion of enhanced traversal, gunplay, and melee weapons, creating a supervillain empowerment that we think is a totally original gameplay experience. There was just an opportunity there to expand into co-op and have this dynamic world where friends can come together to share an experience. Or players can go solo, switching character members between missions while savoring each and every story twist. Do you feel it? The swell of pride for what we have accomplished together. We want to welcome you all to the first episode of our new series, Suicide Squad Insider, where we will provide a deeper look into Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. Over the next few months, we'll be unpacking the game, answering your questions, and sharing a few surprises as we move closer to our launch on February 2nd. We'll also cover how Rocksteady will continue to support the game and its players post-launch with a huge amount of free content. 
On this episode, you're going to hear from different members of the Rocksteady team as we explore more of the game's story, the world of Metropolis, and the core gameplay experience. The Suicide Squad. A fitting moniker. Let's jump into it. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> I, I said some pieces already in between that trailer, and I'm sorry for that. But, oh, my God. That they... Again, I give them props for what they are doing. They are 100% trying to get you to feel that old Rocksteady is there. The characters, the story, the world, everything. Which, by the way, if you roll back that clip, that, that open world, that looks as dead as can be. And I know Arkham City and Arkham Knights wasn't exactly flourishing and busting with every civilian you could possibly think of or anything like that. But they at least had you know the bad guys that are walking around and everything you could listen in and you know hear people and everything like that that and I'm, again we'll see some more in this you know little trailer video thing that they're doing but and that just looks dead boring like is that gonna be fun to explore that that's that's my personal take on everything like that i'm not saying you have to be able to interact with every single person who's just walk, wandering around or anything like that i mean heck you guys know me i loved spider-man 2 and you interact with maybe like i don't know 10 percent of that entire open world but it at least feels alive and it's fun and not to mention the traversal and everything with spider-man that's just obviously fun this i don't know and I, I might be in the minority for this i'm not sure but just looking at the characters themselves the suicide squad i don't, I don't know i feel like i feel like uh, how do i even put this i feel like warner brothers is stuck or when, when this whole thing was like no superman game if that whole thing happened or regardless of when they said hey no uh rocksteady you need to make a suicide squad game i feel like this was during the time that in terms of their movies in terms of the dceu and all that stuff which you know obviously has been stopped now and everything since suicide squad i believe the original one and then the suicide squad the two different movies great naming by the way uh I think the newer one did very well and so i think that's why they're trying to kind of capitalize on that but the time difference between when that movie came out and this game is releasing it's a pretty big thing you know split between there i think and it's just like okay people have kind of moved on especially since you yourself you yourself warner brothers has said yeah no uh james gunn is basically doing redoing the entire dceu calling it whatever it's going to be called essentially right so it's like what the heck is going on here so i'm not really sure what they're trying to do but yeah i don't know, just just watching this I'm, I'm i am seeing the marketing right here i'm i'm not i didn't go to business school i'm not a marketer or anything like that i haven't had any jobs but i as someone who has looked at gaming news and watched youtube videos and now do content creation myself personally I, 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 I see everything. I'm just like, yeah, mm-hmm, yeah, I, I've heard that before. Mm-hmm, yeah. Mm -mm. No, no, I, you can't fool me. But anyway, let's, let's get back in. There's a couple of sections I want to check out, talk to you guys about it. And uh, again, let me hear that symbol in the comments at any points. The Arkham games weren't gritty because Rocksteady makes gritty, dark games. They were that way because that's what suits a Batman story. Every game we approach, we approach that with a similar mindset of just like, how do we enhance that experience? How do we excite players in new ways? Yeah, new criminal record. For the studio to try something new and stretch our legs, or a shooter first with the high powerful traversal elements, was coming out of our comfort zone somewhat, but we wanted to see what we could do to put an Arkham spin on the action shooter space. Now get your damn gun out! In true Rocksteady style, the cinematics are kind of the heart of our story. It's the most cinematics that we've ever done, and every one of them is crafted to perfection. We're not just trying to do what we did before. We're making something which fits the source material that we think will make for an interesting story. But okay, so a few things after watching all that stuff. I just want to get on the screenshot here. Okay, again, I know it's a screenshot and everything, and unfortunately, the quality of the video is only 1080. I can't enhance this up to 4K or anything like that, but... Okay, a few things to talk about. Um, first off, the whole I love how up until now they have basically ignored all all I'm talking all of the past Arkham games and everything. They have solely focused only on this game 
in the previous trailers, the announcement, the whole nine yards. Like the only thing I'm pretty sure we ever saw was like from the studio that brought you Batman, Arkham City, and Knights, you know, type of thing, right? Like that's basically, they have stayed away from it. And now here, man, they are going hardcore into just, this is who Rocksteady is. This is the Batman game. This is why. And I love how everyone was like, we wanted a, you know, a single player st story focused game. It doesn't necessarily have to be single player, I guess. If you want to maybe do a co-op thing, which by the way, that's why they, you know, they, again, the co-op makes it easier for a live service game. Having one character, which again, goes back to the whole Wonder Woman thing with that whole, you know, mess of a thing that's going on after their whole thing of, hey, we're going to dive deeper into live service stuff and everything. And everyone's just like, are you effing stupid? Like, what are you doing? That's the reason why. So again, a co-op game makes it easier to make a live service game. However, I've I've said this, tons of people have said it before me, tons of people are gonna say it after me, but having a team, this, this is why having a team who is known for their story-driven game, you know, single player games essentially, right? Which is what Rocksteady was for the first three Batman games, right? That's what they are known for. And all of a sudden, now you're having to make a live service game. This is why the old team is gone. The new team has now come in. Now, again, I know there are some veterans that are on the team right now. And there are obviously people that know how to make games. But this is not something that is built from the ground up in terms of live service. And we have seen live service games fail and fail and fail and fail time and time again. Even the big ones, Destiny, for example is dying like i'm pretty sure the only live service game to this point right now that is not in any danger to my knowledge at least is fortnite that's it fortnite's about the one i would confidently say is not dying or as there's no you know it's not going to die anytime soon essentially games like apex legends destiny 2 right like they have their ups and their downs but especially something like destiny 2 we've covered that plenty here on this channel that is not doing very well, essentially. So, and uh, again, this uh, is, is it me? Just uh, maybe, maybe I've got nostalgia glasses on for it, but doesn't Arkham Knight look better than this game? Again, I know YouTube compressed the whole nine yards, but this does not look as good as Arkham Knights. It just doesn't. So I, I don't know what's going on. I don't know how early of a build this is. Um, uh, it does not this doesn't look as good. It looks fine. It kind of looks like I'd say, you know, honestly, I call it a PS4 game slash Xbox One. That's what I call it. This doesn't look like a PS5, especially after the amazing year of games we've had this year. It doesn't look like even a medium, you know, PC build or anything like that. You know, like well, I don't know, like a 4060 graphics card with an i5 or an i7 or something like that. Like nothing too crazy or anything like that. It just it really doesn't look like it. It really doesn't. Anyway. Let's move on to the next part. Okay, so this cutscene I'm just gonna let run in the background and everything. I'm not really gonna have any of the volume up or anything like that. So this right here is kind of like, I would believe that the OG Rocksteady actually made, you know, focusing on the cutscenes, the characters, you know, them talking, all that stuff. I could see this being made by them, right? Again, referencing these stuff of old from the Batman games that they're known for and everything like that. That I 100% would believe. And I think that's what they're trying to do right now. They are trying to get you hooked. They're trying to be like, yeah, we know exactly what people want, or this is what people have been saying online that they want and everything like that. And that's exactly what they're doing here. So, but then if we're going to skip forward here in a second, and you're going to see exactly what this game is really about. Brainiacs kill them or made them into soldiers to do his bidding. And through this corruption, the people of Metropolis- That's why we got the empty world. Okay, we get, before we get into the final part of this thing that I actually kind of like that I, again, got spoiled online and everything like that, they already give us the in-universe reason for why there's no one in the city and everything like that, which, okay, fine, I guess, but it just feels like one of those things that they're doing because, again, clearly this game looks like a bit of a graphical downgrade compared to Arkham Knight and everything like that. Even that game at least had, you know, the random taxis driving around and the random bad guys trying to break into the buildings and all that kind of stuff. Like, they at least had that stuff. This game, at least from what we can see, not so much. Unless this build is, again, like over a year and a half old, which 
highly doubt. I'm not saying it's the latest build, but I doubt it's, you know, over a year and a half or two years old or something like that. That's, there's no way. I'd be super shocked if it was. But yeah, and then again, seeing the random, you know, just shooting mechanics and everything, it definitely, you know, they're basic shooting mechanics. I'm sure they'll feel fine. They're not going to feel anything special or anything like that. But they're just going to be basic shooting things. And again, you even see it. It's like typical thing where you just, you know, put the gun on your back, pull it out. Do, 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 do. I mean, half the bullets sound like rubber bullets, even though, again, they're supposedly supposed to kill the Justice League and survive and all that stuff. So it's just kind of like, okay, sure. Now, I, I saw a quick clip of this. And this actually, again, this shows you just a glimpse of the old Rocksteady most likely had some work on this. Before they basically all dipped out and everything. And again, you know that the game's in trouble when the heads and founders of the studio leave before the game is releasing. Now, I know it's normal in the industry to leave after you're done with the project or, you know, you've completed your tasks and everything. So it's kind of like, okay, I'm done, right? Like, let's say, for example, uh, the artists are done with a particular part and so they're going to move on to another project or the you know, the characters and their voice acting or something like that. I 100% I, I get that. 100% do. But when the founders and the people at the top of this studio, not the Warner Brothers people, but the top of this particular studio leave when this game is not even out yet. And then, of course, it gets delayed and everything. Yeah, that should be sending red flags everywhere. So anyway, let's continue on because, again, I got a little bit spoiled by this. But this actually, again, slither. It's just a minuscule bit. I'm just like, yes. What the player knows from our title and what the Suicide Squad is about to find out is that here, the Justice League are the bad guys. They've been corrupted by Brainiac and over the course of the game, your mission will be to kill them. Ugh, Green Lantern, nice. Hey, your face always looks so, what? I do like the design of Green Lantern, not gonna lie. Pretty badass, not gonna lie there. Harley doesn't have any innate superpowers. So to go up against these beings that have incredible strength, it's it's a challenge. I'm in the middle of a recon for Brainiac. Let's walk and talk. You're talking about, you know, the all-star team of superheroes here. I want you to see this. Pay attention, Floyd. Looks bad, feels worse. But once you've been enhanced, there's no going back. Oh. Again, the graphics just kind of look fine, in my personal opinion. And again, I know, I know, graphics, gameplay, the whole nine yards, but I don't know, just, seems, yeah, in my opinion. Stand. When you face off against the most iconic characters in all of superhero them in the Justice League, it's by many uh, people's definition an impossible task. You're searching for stragglers. <laughs> Augmenting Brainiac's army. The shot gets it. The stakes that Rocksteady sets, the challenges they heap upon you as a player. Time to rally up with Brainiac. Ready to make the leap? You know immediately, like, this is the tallest task I will ever take on in a video game. Flash! Brainiac wondered how you got off the ship. Speedster secret. The League doesn't leave anyone behind. Let's make you right, buddy. You know... That's just what I was gonna say. You're gonna be fighting the Justice League. Hey, Metropolis. There's nothing more. Okay, so that, see that right there, that kind of stuff looks cool. You know, the, the Justice League is here. We have never seen them in a video game in modern day. And that looks really cool. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, heck, I mean, just spinning off the top of my head, why isn't this a Wonder Woman game who then you have slowly saved the Justice League and you get to play as them as well? I mean, that would kind of kind of cool. Anyway, we're on tangent. That stuff right there, that right there, yes, that is looking actually pretty decent. It is. Uh, again, the Suicide Squad, I'm kind of, a, I'm kind of just, I'm neutral on them, right? I'm kind of like, I, I know the characters, but overall, I'm just like, okay, fine, whatever. I, I guess a, a game is a game, you know. Like, is, if this was all an animated movie or something like that, yeah, perfectly fine. There've been a couple of cool Suicide Squad animated movies I've seen. They're pretty good and everything like that, but like I can see the small potential of this game but then they're just gonna go straight into the gameplay after this and um I'm not ready I'm not ready just my heart my heart's not ready you know it's not ready for what we're about to see it's a quick side note the actor for Green Lantern I feel like he was the uh oh who was it Zod's son from Young Justice. I'm not 100% sure on that, but he sounds vaguely familiar. 
do some research on that. But anyway, let's continue on. Killing the Justice League and all, but uh, well, you know, these guns are a bit shit. Oh, no offense. And help themselves. Then head northwest. That's the last known of a Gotham arms dealer who's dug into Metropolis. Oswald Cobblepot. Freaking penguin! You want to last more than 10 seconds against the League? Cobblepot's been running anti-meta weapons for years. I want him recruited and brought back to the Hall of Justice. Oh, I'm gonna recruit the shit out of him. Since Batman Arkham Knight, the Penguin is no longer confined to Gotham City. He's made a name for himself in Metropolis as the authority on anti-meta human weapons. Now, Waller wants the squad to recruit him for Argus. I see you've already... Okay, so we got to talk about this because I'm already seeing, again, this, this type of open world and everything. They say this is twice the size of Arkham Knight, which Arkham Knight's a pretty big area, you know, in terms, of, especially when that game came out and everything like that. But again, I still think graphically, this game doesn't look as good. But you can already see, like, you can see some of the wind tunnels here and everything like that, which, again, a lot of, they've even said in this whole thing, that it's all about traversal and getting vertical and everything like that. And this is how you're going to do that, essentially. I mean, one of your characters literally has a jetpack, so it's probably going to boost you up and everything. Harley Quinn has that little bat thing that's flying around that you can grapple to and all that kind of stuff. So I can easily see this is how you're supposed to be getting vertical, essentially, half the time to try and get around the city. I mean, literally, like, look at these. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven over there, 12. You can kind of see the tip over here. Just, yeah, that tip, typical open world. And I... I don't know if this is going to be a seamless, like, huge open world and everything. Because, again, most of the missions and everything, they, they've talked about, like, you're supposed to have this van, essentially, that you, like, go to to recuperate and get ready for your next mission, essentially, which is screams missions and not an actual story that goes along. And, again, a lot of this stuff feels like it was just ripped straight from the Marvel's Avengers game, which we all know where that is right now. And, yeah, but anyway. Stolen traversal equipment. You'll need it to stay off the streets. Setting a new recon point. Go. At the heart of each character's playstyle is their traversal. Traversal gives the player total freedom. Every character Take a shot for every time they say traversal. It determines how the player moves through this world. Don't like to boast, but how great was I? Controlling a superhero character is fun makes a power fantasy for all players. We wanted movement through the city to be fun. Just existing and moving around in Metropolis is a good time. Metropolis is quite a normal city. Well, as normal as a city can be in the DC universe. We spend a lot of time trying to get that art direction correct, trying to get the feel for it correct. You get to see all the kind of DC lore that builds this space. Let me do the talking with Penguin, okay? not just a building so yeah i mean no, nothing i haven't said before it just it looks okay but that's it no, no, nothing special if you told me that another studio made this or like uh, i don't know wb montreal or anyone else under warner brothers or works with the warner brothers i believe you if you said rocksteady i'd be like really rocksteady made this not anymore because again that whole team is basically gone at the very core of our game you will need to be on the move and master each character's movements if you want to succeed. All this grapple is made to let them take advantage of the environment to quickly get out of troublesome situations. Or to the shooting just looks close the distance to introduce them to her baseball bat. Swinging from the bat throne lets her circumvent the trooper's shields and flank them. You know, I saw a lot of comments saying this feels like Sunset Overdrive 2, essentially, which don't get me wrong. That game was actually pretty fun back in the day, but I don't know about this. Also let her catapult herself into the air to shoot the corrupted from above. Now that you've seen some of Harley's combat in this scene, let's explore the rest of the squad's unique play styles in other encounters. Captain Boomerang uses a mix between sniper rifles, SMGs, and shotguns. I just realized that hot tub or pool water, like, it doesn't move at all like i feel like in past games again that's really nitpicky but just something i noticed what's cracking each character has an iconic melee attack that can be used to create what we call juggle kills and also break enemies shields juggling an enemy with a melee attack means they take guaranteed 
Check out those weapon skins. Check out those weapon skins. Purple weapon, blue weapon, gold weapons incoming, folks. Maybe a black weapon or two. Whatever they want to call it. I don't know. But regardless, yep. Mm -hmm. Critical hits from all the guns for a short period after. Shoot enemies in their legs and then close the distance to do a shield harvesting strike to get some shield back. Or just shoot the big purple glowing ball on them and boom, they're dead. Let's shift focus to King Shark. <laughs> All right, this I actually saw online. I wasn't that most impressed by it, but uh, I think th that's basically the end of the trailer and everything like that. They basically say like, you know, we're really focused on the game and everything like that. Waiting for that February release and everything. So what I want to do now is I want to actually go to their pre-order page and check out a couple of things that, uh, yeah, might stop you from buying this if you were maybe on the fence of actually buying it. Okay, so this is what they have up right here. And again, it's your typical pre-order stuff, which don't pre-order. Please, please, please don't pre-order. Just, just don't do it. But it, tell, it talks about the full game. Pre-order bonuses include the classic outfits, the rogue outfits, PS5 digital only, I guess, PlayStation and Warner Brothers have some kind of deal, which, you know, is pretty normal these days. We've, in fact, we've seen it for decades, essentially. Xbox had it back in the old days. Before that, you had Sega and Nintendo doing it the whole nine yards. But anyway, um, but then we look at what's included in this deluxe edition right here. Obviously, full games, just League outfits, three black mask nor weapons. Yeah, mm -hmm. digging into that battle pass right there. Squad gold weapon dolls. Yeah, mm -hmm. one battle pass token. Yep, there we go. They're getting into the battle pass stuff. 72 hour early launch access, classic outfits, and the rogue outfits that we mentioned beforehand. So that early access is only for the digital deluxe edition and not the normal edition. So, you know, typical stuff. They did this even with uh, with Harry Potter, uh, if I remember correctly. We, there were 72 hours, give or take, early that if you did the digital deluxe edition, you could play it early and then everyone got it there and everything like that. So, um, but one thing I did notice here is down here in this little highlighted section, I'll read it for you in case you're just simply listening to this in audio. This battle pass token redeemable for premium battle pass access seasons one through four battle passes subject to availability. So it seems that they are committed to a one to four seasons. They don't stay four seasons because if this game bombs, they can technically pull out of it. One battle pass available per season. WB Games may modify or discontinue online service with reasonable notice at any time. Again, normal stuff that we have seen from live service games. This, no, just don't. This is why, I mean, you should never pre-order. To begin with, just, just, just don't do it, especially in this day and age. But this right here should be showing you that I don't even think they are that confident in this product because what is the purpose of a live service? It's not to beat it in a 20 hour story. It is to continue to come back and keep playing this game for at least a year because that's more money for them. That's what they want, right? So what do you do? You bring in Rocksteady who's known for single player stories for some strange reason. Oh, right. It's because of their credibility most likely. And uh, now you've basically destroyed that team and everything like that, which... I really hope the old team of Rocksteady make their own like development studio and they actually make a good game for us because I, I'd buy that in a heartbeat. I'd support that. Heck, I'll buy three copies. I'll give them away here if I, you know, if we can, but it's just. It hurts to see this. It really hurts to see all of this. So I don't know what the next episode is going to be, but I want to know your thoughts in the comments below. Do you think this game actually looks somewhat decent now with that new trailer thing that they showed us or diary video, whatever you want to call it? I'm just going to call it a trailer. Do you think it looks good now? Or are you just like, now nah, I'm staying away from this essentially? Because again, it's just a live service game. That's, that's all it is essentially, right? And with Warner Brothers now wanting to make basically all their things live service, that's... Now ah, they're, they're pulling the Sony. Sony has actually halted half of their live service games because they've seen the pushback from us, from their developers and everything, and just the market in terms of live service games in general. Warner Brothers apparently has not. And I, I guess they're ignoring Harry Potter for some reason. I know Harry Potter is technically bigger than their DC stuff, but Harry Potter was a single player game we all thought would have monetary transactions in it. It doesn't. It sold over a billion. Love or hate the game, you can't deny that. So what the heck? Like, why? Why not focus on your single play? It's going to take some time. I feel like this is going to take some time. It, but it, every publisher 
every CEO and higher ups and everything are just gonna have to get smacked over the head enough times where things fail and fail and fail until they finally get it. Until they finally get it. And what we need to do as consumers, because it's their job to, you know, show us why we should buy this game. We do not owe them money or anything like that. They need to convince us to buy it. We as players need to speak with our wallets and not buy the games like this. We just, they're, they're a money, they're cash grab essentially. Do not buy these games. I am beg of you, please do not. Let's get gaming back to a good place where we didn't have to deal with this BS. I could keep ranting on. But regardless, I want to know your thoughts down below in the comments. You're going to buy this game. Are you saying skip? Are you saying maybe wait? Or are you going to do what I'm going to do and just watch the cutscenes essentially? Because that's probably what I'm going to do. We will continue to monitor the game, obviously. We'll make videos like this talking about it. Let me know if you'd like this way of how we did the video. Or would you prefer just simply camera, screen, and that's it. And not the whole dual switchback and everything like that. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments but anyway guys i've been telling with direct gaming thank you so much for dropping by and again if you enjoyed the video a like would be great and if you really want to support us and help us fight that old scary algorithm a sub would be greatly appreciated but anyway hope everyone has a great day a great week until next time everyone i'll see you all in the next one johnny